Well, today let's talk about some eye health, and we're going to cover cataracts right off the bat. A lot of people are dealing with this condition where the, the lens starts to get cloudy. You may get a spot on it. You see this little cloudy spot in your vision, and then it starts to grow. Then the lens itself gets completely cloudy, and you can't see anything. Usually when that happens, you go to the eye doctor, and you end up with a lens replacement. But a lot of people ask me, if you have the beginning stages of a cataract, can they actually be reversed? Well, if you can, if it's at the very beginning stages where you may technically not notice it that much, or the doctor says, oh, it looks like you're getting the beginnings of a cataract, but you don't technically notice it, that's when you really want to step up in the areas of nutrition. But when it comes to eye health, I always recommend, you need the nutrition now. Our eyes are very, very delicate. The tissues of the eye are very, very delicate. And we must do everything we can to protect our eyes. And it always begins with nutrition. Of course, if you go outside in, in bright sunlight, always wear sunglasses and those that offer the proper UV protection. So let's get into the nutrition in the areas of the lens of the eye. The things I'm going to explain to you today are used for prevention of cataracts and the possibility of reversing very small cataracts uh, at the same time. So let's start off with a nutrient called N-acetylcysteine. Long word, but a powerful nutrient when we get it into the body. But it does something very magical. When you, when you ingest N-acetylcysteine, it will actually convert into a much more powerful amino acid called glutathione. And this is one of the most potent antioxidants. It's also very strong in its anti-cancer effects, and it's found in very high concentrations in two areas of the human body. One is your liver. Number two is the lens of the eye. So when you have adequate levels of glutathione, you should not be having a cataract. But if you have the beginning stages, I would definitely use the N-acetylcysteine, which is the proper form because then the human body will convert it to glutathione. There are glutathione supplements on the market, but research is showing that those supplements do not absorb very well. And the best thing to do is take the N-acetylcysteine so the body will make its conversion on its own. And then your eyes and your liver will benefit from taking the N-acetylcysteine. Next, always, always antioxidants when it comes to the eyes. Vitamin C has always been indicated for eye health as well as vitamin E. Now, I put vitamin E down here because vitamin E works in a different area of the eye. If you've ever have uh, weak eye muscles, maybe you're reading and all of a sudden your eyes start to shift really fast, that's an indication that you could actually have low vitamin E levels. So by improving your vitamin E levels around 400 units per day uh, on the low end, that can actually correct that type of eye shifting while you're reading, which is an indication of your muscles and your eyes getting weak. Now, I just want to put that down there because a lot of people ask me about that, believe it or not. Okay. When it comes to the lens of the eye, I told you about the N-acetylcysteine, but also there's another nutrient called carnosine. Now this is not carnitine, which is another amino acid that we always use for heart health, but carnosine is one of the best anti-aging nutrients. Now this is an amino acid, but not part of the amino acid family of the 22 aminos that form a protein chain. This is kind of like an isolated form, but it's very, very powerful because it can actually make old cells become new again. There's been some incredible research studies in which they actually took human cells and put them in a Petri dish and then put, in, put them in a carnosine solution. Well, during one of the studies, they noticed that the old cells actually became new again, became younger because of the carnosine. But the, during the research study, the, the cells were actually tainted. They didn't realize that when they put the human cells in this Petri dish, there were cancer cells uh, put into that dish. But what they found out was the carnosine killed the cancer cells. So there needs to be more studies in the areas of cancer and carnosine, so I hope we see those pretty soon. But in the areas of eye health, what they've noticed, that carnosine has the property of actually reversing a cataract. Now I know that in England they actually provide 
carnosine eye drops that you can use, and according to their studies, they show that by using the eye drops daily, you can actually re, uh, reverse cataracts uh, on a, uh, over a long period of time, so you would have to use those every single day. But you can take this uh, supplement, this nutrient, in the human body in a capsule or a tablet form. I will tell you this right now, it is not a cheap nutrient. It is on the expensive side, but it is strictly related to eye health and, and related to the anti-aging process of the human body. So this one in the endless little cysteine would be right up there at the top if you're trying to prevent cataracts or trying to reverse a small one. Next, the mainstay of eye health has always been vitamin A. We've heard about beta carotene. We've heard about alpha carotene and the other carotenoids, but vitamin A in its fish liver oil form is the best form to take for overall eye health. And the reason is this, everyone can benefit from a fish oil source of vitamin A like you find in cod liver oil. Because the fact is, if you take beta carotene, if you have an underactive thyroid or if you're diabetic, you can have a very difficult time converting beta carotene into a usable form of vitamin A. Other two nutrients to improve the prevention of cataracts is lutein and zeaxanthin, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, these are highly indicated for eye health and also the omega-3s. Taking fish, oil, fish liver oil every single day can also help to improve the overall health of the tissues of the eye and also to work with those who are diabetic. If you would like to watch this segment on cataracts again, go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Dr. Ward Bond. Let's talk glaucoma. And as you can see on my blackboard, we have a lot of things to cover and we got to cover it in a short time. So let's start off first of those that are at risk for glaucoma. Now, research shows that African Americans are six to eight times higher in a risk group of getting glaucoma than those of other uh, ethnic groups. Those that are over 60 years of age, those that have diabetes and chronic high blood pressure. Also, those that are not uh, keeping their thyroid uh, normalized, so those that are suffering with hypothyroidism and not able to keep it under control may be at risk for glaucoma later on. And believe it or not, how many of you have been using uh, steroid shots or steroid type medication as a pain reliever? Chronic use of these types of medications have been linked to an increased risk of glaucoma. Now, what is glaucoma? Well, glaucoma is increased ocular pressure, and that's what we're going to talk about in this segment on how to prevent it and how to reduce the ocular pressure if it's elevated, according to your eye doctor. Now, let's talk about some of the symptoms here. There's eye pain. Now, if you have any eye pain whatsoever, you need to go see your eye doctor immediately. Eye pain, blurred vision. If you start seeing halos of light, also uh, reddening of the eyes, that just doesn't seem to go away. And then also uh, nausea and vomiting may be some symptoms of glaucoma due to the fact of vision changes uh, leading to that. Some of you know by having eye surgery and having your eyes uh, to recover the vision to come back. Some people have reported having nausea and vomiting due to that. So when there's uh, changes in the eye, that can possibly happen. But definitely, if there's eye pain or blurred vision, and especially if you see the halos, go talk to your doctor immediately to find out if you have glaucoma. Now let's start talking about the important nutrients that one needs to be taken if you are at risk for glaucoma, or those who have been diagnosed with elevated ocular pressure. These things have been shown to help so many people in reducing that ocular pressure so that way we do not damage the optic nerve. Now if you have increased ocular pressure in the eye and, you, and it's not um, stabilized, you can cause damage to the op optic nerve and when that happens that leads to blindness and you cannot reverse damage to the optic nerve. So what we want to do is, first of all, you want to normalize your glucose levels. So if you're diabetic, you've got to keep those insulin levels as low as possible. And also watch the foods you eat. You need to eat fruits and vegetables, plenty of fiber. 
these foods have a lot of nutrients that are needed for healthy eyesight. So keep that in mind. So normalize your glucose levels, watch your diet, stay away from artificial sweeteners. Those things can damage the nerve tissue and can be a damaging to vision as well. Exercise, get outside, do something, get moving. Exercise has been shown to maintain proper ocular pressure. Now let's get into some of the nutrition. Now omega-3s, your EPA, DHA found in your fish oil are vital because that is needed for a healthy retina and has also been linked to uh, the prevention of macular degeneration. So you want to make sure you're taking the omega-3s every single day. I highly recommend the fish oil. Flax is good, but when it comes to the eyes, I kind of like to lean towards the fish oils. Uh, two major nutrients found in the eyes. We're going to cover this in the areas of macular degeneration, but I've got to mention them because it works in every area in the prevention of eye conditions. Lutein and zeaxanthin is part of the carotenoid family, and these are actually found in the macular pigment, which I'll cover in, a, in another video. But these two here are vital for eye health, so you want to make sure that you're eating your fruits and your vegetables. You know, even goji berries are high in lutein. Eat the kiwis. Eat, you know, all the foods that God created to get these nutrients into your eyes, because these are vital. Now let's say you have been diagnosed with increased ocular pressure. The doctor says, well, your pressure is a little high, but we're going to watch it. And some of you where the doctor may say, well, your, your ocular pressure is higher, but so let me give you some eye drops to help you keep that pressure down. Well, there's a nutrient that's been working very well for so many people that have increased ocular pressure, and it's an herb from India called Coleus forsculi. This actually works with the immune system, but it's been shown in a research study to work directly in lowering and normalizing ocular pressure. I've had some clients that have actually used coleus forsculi and have told me that it's worked very well for them to maintain proper ocular pressure. And not only that, they didn't have to use the eye drops from the doctor. But when you use coleus forsculi, there's another nutrient that I would definitely add, and that's vitamin C along with the bioflavonoids. Now the bioflavonoids such as rutin and hesperidin are found in the rind of the citrus fruit and there is so many nutritional properties found in the the rind as well as the pith, that white portion of a citrus fruit. That's really where the deep nutrients are found. I know that when I juice things like blood oranges or navel oranges and lemons and limes, it's that rind that I like to juice because that's where a lot of these bioflavonoids are found for proper eye health. And they say that by getting vitamin C and those bioflavonoids into your body, you can maintain proper ocular pressure. So keep these things in mind. Make sure you normalize your glucose levels every single day. Uh, you can use nutrients such as bergamante, which works in normalizing glucose. I know uh, maki has been shown to do that as well exercise. Everybody needs exercise. If you don't move it, you're going to lose it. Again, the omega-3s, make sure those two mainstays in the eyes, lutein and zeaxanthin. Again, for ocular pressure, coleus forsculi and the vitamin C with bioflavonoids. If you want to see this segment on glaucoma again, go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash drwardbond and also sign up for my free e-newsletter at drwardbond.com. In this segment of Think Natural, we're covering macular degeneration. And what I'm going to show you today are the nutrients that you need to prevent macular degeneration. Now, I'm not going to split the categories up this time between the dry form and the wet form. We're really looking at the areas of prevention. But if you do have macular degeneration, understand that these nutrients will still benefit you to help slow down the degeneration of the macula. So we're going to start off with some of the easy nutrients that we need to be taking every single day. Vitamin C, I highly suggest taking vitamin C with bioflavonoids. Those are excellent for our overall eye health. Also, vitamin E, a powerful antioxidant. We need this one as well for overall eye health. But let's finally get into the two nutrients that have just tons of research about them and that are definitely the two you need in the areas of the prevention of macular degeneration and that is lutein and zeaxanthin. Now both of these are in a family of nutrients called carotenoids but these are vital 
for our overall eye health. Now here's the thing, I'm gonna grab my chalk here and we're just gonna pretend that we've looking at the eye and here we have the lens. Now, and, and back here we're gonna just kind of pretend that's the optic nerve. And on the back portion of the eye here, there's this kind of like this inner lining back here, we have the macula. Now the thing about the macula is that there's also a section what we call macula pigment. Now that macula pigment is a yellowish color. The thing about that pigment is, is that it contains lutein and zeaxanthin. Now when people read the research or they read an article in a health magazine and it says take lutein and zeaxanthin for improved eye health and it helps to re uh, prevent or reduce the risk of macular degeneration. Well people think oh, okay these nutrients are great for the eyes. The reason why these things are not just great for the eyes, they're vital for the eyes because they actually belong in the eye. So through research we understand that the macula pigment contains lutein and zeaxanthin. So where do you get those from besides, you know, you can do a supplement. Uh, there's a lot of research done if you look around for eye supplements, they'll call A-REDS or A-REDS-2, and they'll contain these two nutrients. But also look at the foods you can eat. Kiwi, I love kiwi. Zucchini, yellow squash, cucumber, spinach, eat it raw, don't cook it. Celery, broccoli, these contain lutein and there's a, a lot of other foods that contain lutein as well. Zeaxanthin, orange peppers, oranges and mangoes. And did you know that eggs contain lutein and zeaxanthin together as well as for those of you who are on the kale kick, kale contains both nutrients, romaine lettuce, turnip and collard greens also contain both nutrients. So these two are vital, but I've got to tell you something. Not everybody can get the lutein and zeaxanthin from their food or their supplements into the macula of the eye. And you're thinking, okay, what, what's the deal? Here it is, Now this has been proven by research. If you have a cholesterol problem, that means if your LDL is elevated and your HDL levels and go pull out your blood test, the last cholesterol test you've gotten from your doctor, look at your HDL level. If your HDL level is under 61, you do not have the power for the lutein and zeaxanthin to go from the liver to the macula of the eye. You need to have your HDL levels over 61 to effectively transport lutein and zeaxanthin from the liver to the eye. So that is vital, ladies and gentlemen. So the thing is this, eye health is definitely linked to liver health. You have a healthy liver, you can have healthy eyes. Now think about this, what happens when somebody's jaundice? Well, they get yellowing of the skin. They can also have the yellowing of the whites of their eyes. So it shows that there's a direct link between the liver and the eyes. Just the same way with macular degeneration. Healthy liver, healthy eyes. So make sure that your cholesterol levels are in healthy ranges and make sure that HDL level is above 61. Now to do that, you need to eat correctly, eat right, eat the fruits and vegetables. You also need to maintain proper blood sugar levels and you may want to take things such as chromium picolinate. You want to take things like lecithin and, and fish oil. Fish oil is great for the retina. I want to cover that in a second. And even bergamante, which helps to normalize HDL levels and LDL. So that way, your eyes, your macula, can receive these two vital nutrients to prevent macular degeneration and the possibility of preventing it from getting worse if you already have it. Okay, now let's look at some other nutrients. Now research has shown that by taking the mineral zinc plus antioxidants, now the antioxidants could be the lutein, the zeaxanthin, vitamin C, and vitamin E. When they do these in a combination, they found that it improved eye health more with the zinc and the antioxidants than if you took zinc by themselves or the antioxidants by themselves. So they do work together. Also, rosemary extract has been shown to improve and prevent macular degeneration. And ladies, give you a little side note on rosemary extract. It's been shown to be a possible breast cancer preventative and also it's a nice uh, calming herb as well. Uh, for healthy eyes, healthy oils. 
Sesame seed oil has been shown to reduce UV rays by 30%. Coconut and olive can reduce UVs, UV rays entering the eyes by 20%. It's almost like internal sunglasses. Uh, taurine, the amino acid that I've talked about before in the areas of glaucoma, also work in the areas of helping the retina remove waste. That's important. And of course, always take your B vitamins because B vitamins help with the health of the nerves and also work as catalysts and work with the metabolism of the foods and the nutrients that we need to have healthy eyes. And if you would like to watch this segment again on macular degeneration, go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Dr. Ward Bond and sign up for my free e-newsletter at drwardbond.com. Dr. Bond invites you to connect with him online at drwardbond.com where he shares more than 30 years of nutritional experience with you. Join his free Think Natural e-newsletter for up-to-date nutrition news, articles, and helpful tips that can help recharge your health covering everything from your body, your mind, and your spirit. Whatever type of health situation you're going through, there's a natural answer that can help lead to a better, healthier you. And Dr. Bond has something new for all of his viewers. Sign up free for Dr. Ward Bond and food healing chef Susan Irby's Healing Remedies and Recipes online class. Learn how food can be your healer. Everything we eat will either benefit or hurt our bodies. Learn about different health conditions and which foods will benefit you the most. Connect with Dr. Ward Bond on Twitter, Facebook, and his YouTube channel. You can watch many of his past and current episodes of the Dr. Ward Bond Show, where he encourages you to always think natural. As Ezekiel 47.12 tells us, The fruit of the tree shall be our meat, and the leaves shall be our medicine.